Good evening, Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise fans, uh, for our final match of Tuesday back here on the flagship channel. Uh, my name is Stoppable Force, and I'm happy to be in the booth for this match between Martin Broadcloak and Zilch for a uh, tiebreaker in the Ogre Axe group. Uh, behind the scenes tonight, we have Reckless Charlie uh, doing the restream and J Mac the Librarian on tracking. And with me in the booth tonight is Mike Mike. Mike, how you doing? I am doing great, and I am hyped for this finale of Ogre Axe Group. I'd like to welcome Free Enterprise to coming in with the race. Thank you for not spoiling your race. And we have a really good one tonight. And this uh, particular group has been an absolute gauntlet. Uh, they'll be ready for brackets uh, when they start because they've basically been in them the whole time. It's true. This uh, The Ogre Axe group has been a complete slugfest. Uh, the amount of matches that these two have had to do just to get to 3-2 and play each other to uh, have a chance to come in and play whoever is coming out of the Crystal Ring group is uh, phenomenal. We've seen some great matches, and I don't think this one will be any exception. Although, just looking at these, uh, uh, at these objectives, this could be quick because we have a remarkably low number of key items required here. I only count five. And we have a flat kit, so um, it could be one of those where we have a really jet seed, or we might have something buried very deep. Uh, you never know. But we do have a couple uh, objectives here that lead to longer seeds. That's uh, launching the Falcon and also the Giant. Yeah, I love that we have the... We're, we're going everywhere on this seed. We've got the Giant, we've got the Falcon, we've got objectives on the moon, we've got objectives underground. Uh, we have everyone's favorite, mandatory music, completing Cave Magnus for Objective 3. So, uh, looking forward to that. Yeah, that really fits the objectives of get Ed Edward, equip the spoon, and go to Cave Magnus. Cue the tunes, we're going to be doing all those things. Well, maybe not Edward. We're probably already preparing that bug report for yet another mandatory harp. Uh, who do you like to see as a starting character with Palom? Uh, with Palom, I'm really just looking for anybody who's a little beefier who can kind of chaperone him through those early levels. Give me someone like a Sid or a Kane or... Um, I mean, even, even a Rosa with a good bow is a good start. Just somebody who can help him get those early levels till he gets online. Kane is a good start. Ask and you shall receive. We have a uh, cane to get us going right off the bat, and we have our music already. Mom bomb handing our runners that twin harp right off the bat. Still not something they're going to be doing right away, but it's nice to know that that objective is going to be at the forefront of their mind, uh, that they can go do that really whenever they feel they're ready. Uh, well, these runners, they, they faced each other once already. Uh, Martin won a pretty close uh, matchup, so I wonder if they'll be metagaming each other. I know they've also probably met in prior tournaments, so it'll be interesting to see what plays we see. And well, right off the bat, we're, we have a watery pass for Zilch while Martin goes and is going to check on that bedward. Zilch actually checking the Mist Cave, which is a move uh, actually I have not seen until Zilch did it the other day during a different match that he did win. Uh, it's Martin. Mist Cave, and he gets a Gaia hat, which <laughs> is close, near and dear to my heart. And an Assassin Dagger, which is pretty nice on Palom. If you get get him to, to RA1, uh, that will help you uh, potentially uh, do some Trap Chest in the Sylph Cave. We also got a Bandana for that cane. So um, the, the rare uh, Mist Cave has some pretty good loot. And did you see... What Bedward just gave us? I did, but uh, it looks like Bedward gave our runners a magma key, so they can go ahead and shortcut to the underground and take advantage of what's down there without necessarily having to launch the Falcon just to get down there. So, we talked uh, about talked about potentially uh, jet seeds. I just saw a curse drain on yeah. uh, Martin's side. We already have an one of five objectives and underground access. So, uh, the runners, whatever their plan was, uh, they have to be on their toes now. Everything's coming at you fast. Yeah, this seed just getting jettier by the moment. And while our runners are probably great to see, okay, I don't have to do the hook route just to get underground. You have to remember that your opponent's seeing the exact same thing. And that can be a lot of pressure in these, uh, these situations. I love the looting divergence. We're seeing public treasury, uh, 
we saw that. Uh, yeah, uh, this cave, no Evelyn yet, uh, or Watery Path, and with uh, Magma Key, we might not see them at all today. That's true. Our runners could technically go straight to uh, looting some more, some more free high-tier chests in the underground, maybe come back to Evelyn when they feel they can take on those trap chests, which is really the highlight, because you can spike those nice uh, tier 8 items. Uh, speaking of which, Zilch, in his uh, public treasury looting, did find a dwarf axe, so he'll be able to back row his cane, one of the rare ways to do that outside of exercising a glitch. So uh, this party going to be nice and safe until we can get the crack kit off us. Love to see that mute dagger for Martin to um, good to deal with some anti mage wear. Uh, taking Antlion right away, uh, I might be tempted to get uh, look for sirens and get a quick take on on Palum, especially if you can find a slow character on Hobbs with that assassin. Dagger. Maybe make quick work of uh, of an egg or two. We have Arc Imps down. Uh, on here in Antlion Cave, that should go by really quick. Yeah, not really where you want to see a boss that's technically free, but also here in the Antlion Cave, they're not going to punch you into a fine paste. Uh, so, Martin will be through this fight pretty soon. Zilch over Troy, I'm managing to find both exits and star bales in the same shop, picking up a few more of each uh, before flying off to go check that character on the back and not Hobbs. Uh, Martin, on the other hand, finds the Sand Ruby. Here's another objective in a vanilla location. Wow, two out of five already found. We're four minutes in. Yeah, Might Charlie, get out of here in 50 minutes. Charlie evidently decided that he was going to roll us a late night seed that also gets us to bed by a reasonable time. So thank you, Reckless Charlie. Uh, this is also really good news for Martin, though, because that Sand Ruby is considered a gated character check, so this could be someone someone like a Cecil or a Fu, a real power, a real power character. Honestly, just a third body. Speaking of which, Zilch finds uh, Sid on the back of Mount Homs, not a bad early game character, and a good anchor late game, especially since he does have that dwarf axe to slow him down. And the guards, who are not, uh, not a bad fight. Again, not really where you want to find one of your quote-unquote free fights, but uh, at least makes it easy to pick up Sid. Yeah, we've seen two free fights already, so uh, we got a giant coming up later. We might... We might have some tougher things going on if we're getting all our easy uh, checks out of the way. Yeah, it's possible that our runners uh, skate through this objective and then get halted by a Kainatso at the element spot and a Wyvern in the nice speedy CPU spot later. So, uh, could be some fun things for them to tackle with these free bosses showing up early. And shout outs to, to Reckless Charlie rolling uh, our quick late night feed and you two stoppable on comms with me and uh, and we have J-Mac uh, tracking. We have a whole pink puff uh, team right here. The admins went down low subterranean cave, used the siren. Uh, we said let's dance as we do and they said actually could you uh, could you run this uh, Ogre Axe finale for us and we agreed. Yeah I mean dancing's not that different from uh, comms tracking and re-rolling when you get to it. Zilch taking his dip into uh, Antlion Cave now. Martin having looted the back of Hobbs now, leaving with his Sid in tow, I believe. Yeah, no one underground yet. Uh, just doing their orderly checks. Playing through yeah. the overworld. Looks like Martin going to check what that Sand Ruby has for him, do his objective, and maybe get another uh, important character uh, who could uh, boost this team even a little more. Pulls Dancing Dagger out of the pot on his way by. I know I would be very tempted to go underground. Ooh, but here's a Fusoya in the bed. So eager. We, we, we went to give him a... We went to give him a, his Soma Drop already. He didn't want it yet. We'll give it to him in a moment. But uh, with that Sand Ruby, he joins the party. And now we have a uh, Jetty-looking Seed with a lot of power. Yeah, on Zilch's side, demonstrating an interesting uh, thing you can do with the Assassin Daggers here. They have that uh, seemingly random proc to uh, swoon or instantly kill an enemy. Uh, if you can time it so that you're right after they go, so that, they're very, so that their ATB count is zero or as close as possible, it's very easy to land those procs. And so it's surprising the things that you can get through with just an Assassin Dagger in this early game. Sid looking up to those... Uh dark M's being very small and uh, they, he's through it quickly Sid wishing he could wishing he could wield a dagger but he is the size of a dagger right now 
Martin picks up Fasonia. Looks like he's headed to the Mist Cave. Not a surprise. Probably wants to knock out a few of these extremely easy bosses. They may not be an objective, but they do power up Fasonia. Since the Fasonia challenge is on, where Fasonia does not start full power, but every boss gets him a little closer to getting there. Finds uh, the Magus sisters here. Uh, not a bad spot for them. They're not going to be a big threat or anything. Yeah, we don't often see a double dip into uh, Mist Cave with, uh, with uh, especially with no boss hunts on in this flag set that we're giving our free key item but today we are and we see maga sisters the thing we have a mute knife but dancing dagger is going to be just as quick there's not much hp at the spot so the magic power can still knock our uh, runners over but the weaker powered characters at least if they're not careful uh zilch picking up his own fusoya uh, we'll see what route he takes to power him up whether he's going to take some of these bosses too or head straight into the ground That'll be interesting too. We've seen some runners uh, fade or deals, but when you have food, that's three boss checks to get him some, some spells. So we might see an ordeals and might see some Baron before they venture underground. Yeah, the more of these easy bosses they can get out of the way, the more the food comes online. It can just completely put some of these seeds in the microwave if he has to. Black belts for sale and. Uh, Kaipo here, but uh, Zilt says no thanks. I got some mages, and I'm, and I'm not that rich yet, so. And when the seed gives you mages, you look for Stardust Rods. Uh, looks like Martin also opting, since he was in Mist Cave anyway. Just go ahead and loot it, picking up that nice nice stuff for himself, too. And looks, looks like we might have our first runner underground. I like this play. I want to get, I want to get a Palum quaking, and uh, there's a couple bosses in Dwarf, should he choose to, to, to go there, and also uh, a freebie opportunity. So there's a, a lot of good options, as, as well as coffins, hourglasses, and the sirens I mentioned. Okay. All kinds of great gated charms. Yep. Even if he can't take the bosses on at, uh, at Dwarf Castle yet, which seeing, seeing Fusoya's uh, starting uh, arsenal, he may not be able to do that yet, but... I like making a sweep of the underground here, whether it's treasure chests, shops, or both. Getting that Fate March freebie, seeing if maybe our queen is something that's either completely free or that we have to, uh, or that we know to hear up for later, and then just stopping to set up that self check. So, a little extra value when they do finally go to for bull. Alright, bold runners underground, and. Looks like Zilch is gonna do some shopping right away. Martin's gonna hit, uh, Agart. We got some camping gear, cure threes, mute bells, all good stuff. Yeah, he never sad to see those. Zilch going back to loot the dwarf treasury, finding himself uh, a lot of Ridia equipment for Ridia we don't have, but a silk web, which is really nice to find later. Another mute knife, another silk web, and a textile, let's say textile crafting machine operator for the job board. Yeah, he read that faster than I did. I saw a textile, so. <laughs> Finding heroin robes in the Toma armor shop for the uh, complete lack of characters we have who can wear them, but better remember if we come across a uh, maybe a Rosa leader. Just elixirs in the item shop, no luck on the sirens yet. I'm gonna get a, a freebie check from Martin here and potentially uh, a little bit of looting. This will be our first kind of higher, uh, higher cl uh, treasure class looting area that we can head. There's one trap chest here they'll be looking for. As the warrior's chest in it, and more convergence. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't believe either Fusoya and definitely not Palom has Quake yet. Otherwise, maybe if they can get that Palom and RA1, they can think about even taking on the warrior's chest right now. Uh, I know I've had good luck spiking an adamant uh, armor there myself, and that could be a really early power boost to make this fast seed even faster. But uh, uh, looks like they may just be taking advantage of these higher tier uh, untrapped chests right now. With an assassin dagger and a dwarf axe, uh, if they had an hourglass, they could even do some cheeky, uh, uh, some kill setups. Yeah, that definitely also opens up the possibility of going back and taking on those Evelyn chests, or if they find the darkness crystal here soon, maybe taking on the hairdryer chest on the moon. Sorcerer robe, not a bad pickup either. But with the rods, we're, now we're finding all our mage gear. There's the hook from the freebie. <laughs> Still dishing out. Uh, 
objective items. So we now we can uh, do the hook route. Should we uh, do that yep, sooner yeah. than later? Usually we see those towards the end of the seed, but it's now open to us. Yep, and uh, I just spotted, uh, I believe, sirens. I didn't see what else in the Famart shop, but I definitely saw sirens, and I believe Martin is emptying his inventory to pick up a few. <laughs> Welcome RPG Limit Break. Uh, we have a fantastic Ogre Match uh, finale between Martin Rodcloak and Zilch. Thank you for not spoiling your race. Yeah, keep quiet about the uh, results of your match or you get the bonk. Ooh, we're showing an evil wall at the uh, Queen spot and Osra just moved one over and became king. So uh, that evil wall might take our runners a little while to prep for. Yeah, that evil wall is going to punch pretty hard. Not quite as hard as in the king spot, but hard enough that we won't be seeing it for a while unless uh, unless we're going to spend some quality time with uh, sirens and eggs. Speaking of quality time, looks like that's what Martin's setting up for now. I see the cursed ring going on to Sid as an agility anchor. He's saving, and he's got that pile of sirens from the Fey March. Just trying to figure out right now how he's actually going to kill uh, the... Uh, <laughs> the eggs once he summons them. Let's see if he drops his battle speed to three, and if he does that, R A one Palum should go right. Uh, should go first, and uh, and then one shot him with a dagger. Yeah, he's putting a Lilith rod on him, which is interesting. I don't know what spells he has on him that are worth casting yet. Maybe I maybe I missed something there. Uh, I guess we'll see what he does. Zilch, meanwhile, headed down the uh, self cave, going to set up the. Uh, Set up the uh, Sheila One Check back for bull defense. We unfortunately didn't manage to get the pan to make it a one stop shop, but uh, two's not bad. Hey, you get that early bang key, and you can at least uh, double dip uh, bull, if not single dip. Not too bad, although every time I try it, my magma key is in the pool, so better runners didn't have to deal with that thing. Uh, Martin taking on uh, letting Callum stop the eggs and Fusilia cast ice spells at them, so it won't be long before he's got his quake to get online. So it's actually going to make a stop here at Dwarf Castle, it looks like. It'll be interesting to see if he's going to shop. I'm guessing since there's no save, he's probably not going to go look at the bosses yet, but uh, could find some more fun stuff in the shops and the treasure chests. Ooh, an hourglass, twos and lice. The hourglass is really nice. Um, that opens up a lot of trap chests. Even, uh, some cases safety on your egg with stop as we just saw martin uh handle the egg with you don't you don't need to use your hourglass there as often even though hourglass lasts quite a bit longer also a crystal ring um on the way to the weapon and armor shops that is really nice yeah i am never unhappy to see that crystal ring especially on fusoya who has a. Uh... Uh, 20 agility and stubbornly refuses to gain any more unless you want to level him past 70 and cross your fingers for random gains. So, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really nice if you want to keep using that Fusilia, but not as your anchor. Yeah. Alright, Zilch is, has already exited, uh, the underground and is on his way to Fubul. Yep, as we've alluded to, he set up a second check here for himself, so this is just value now. Probably doing the defense, and then uh, also checking to see what Sheila has today. Uh, putting on some of that nice gear that he got. Uh, Martin heading down into the underground, taking uh, taking a few shots here to see if he can find a nice trap chest that he can take on the quake that his Pelham presumably has hey. now. He set up for it. He had, ooh, Marsani, if we find an edge. Uh, he, ha he can get that quake off. Um, the agility setup, but uh, th th doesn't find a chest yet, and is just out of here. Yeah. Wait, wait, doubles back. There we go. Two more ah, tries. Nope. It's a Zeus just, gauntlet. Oh, though. a Zeus gauntlet is a decent consolation prize. <laughs> All the trap chests are on the other side, it appears, and he's not gonna, gonna dig too deep for it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of extra walking to go find those when there's other loot sources he could go to, and he really wants some trap chests. Castle Evelyn is just sitting up there and he's fully prepared for it at this point. And that's painful walking, too. Uh, and there's Valvalis, who's not going to trouble us so much today. So that center slot jumping came. Yeah, Zilch's uh, Fusoya, unfortunately, not having the ice, too, that uh, Martin's does, but uh, Palum has it. So uh, with Kane jumping to take Red Tornado for him, uh, yeah, this, this won't be too difficult. Just chewing through her hit points. 
We're following Zilch's footsteps, uh, checking out Dwarf Castle, picking up our glasses, no surprise there. There's the rare drain cast. I guess when it's, I guess when it's what you have. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> realizing that his paladin was still holding that assassin dagger. Not going to do him any favors when he's actually casting spells with paladin now. Then see if we equip those sword robes and whatnot too. Um, who would you put their crystal ring on? Oh, tough choice. Yeah. I, I usually tend to default to putting it on Fusilia just because he's he's kind of slow, especially in these overroll areas where you tend to prefer a fast tanker to a slow one. But, um... Yeah, honestly, probably just Fusilia. <laughs> yeah, with a with a crystal ring and a ninja hat, you can get him to 20 to kill you. Fusilia has base 20, um, and puts him in pretty good shape for for Z if you're not gonna run uh, pure RA one strats. And uh, good to see. Oh, Zilch is heading up to check that other. Uh, see if Sheila had anything because the king did not. Stopping to give Fusilia a Samba drop. The one he wouldn't take while he was in bed. Yeah. He's ready for it now. And, we're and there's ready the Earth for Crystal. Our next, <laughs> our next objective. Wow. Our runners now have. Or Zilch now has four key items Martin is hot on his tail, and those are four of the five that they will need to. Uh, to finish out the seed. No darkness crystal yet. <laughs> oh, so we're, uh, are we literally just a darkness crystal away from Belmont? We are. And those seeds can be scary where you look over and realize, hey, I can do every objective. I just have to, you know, route it and make sure that I'm powerful enough to do it without wiping because my opponent's probably in the same boat right now. Right now, it's a race to do your objectives because, uh, no, that darkness crystal is is here somewhere, um, and if you, d you want to do your objectives anyway, if it's behind a single one of those, you have your go mode. Yeah, there's every possibility the darkness crystal is at the top of Zot or uh, at the bottom of Cave Magnus, and our runners just really have to go check to find out. Zilch uh, picking up his hovercraft, taking it over to uh, Cave Evelyn, uh, parking it close to Castle Evelyn, maybe thinking to hit both of these here, maybe maybe to check who the character is, maybe to see if at this point he can launch the Falcon. Um, probably going to do some looting here in Castle Evelyn. Yeah, here we go. So uh, with those hourglasses, those trap chests in here are just free. That's three tier, could be three uh, potentially tier eight items for our runners, including the fabled adamant armor. Yeah, that'd be really handy knowing that we are going to have to as quickly as possible take down an evil wall. Yep, uh, that would at least ensure that one person is uh, safe enough to get through that fight. The punches do nothing, the crush just do anything. Oh, maybe, does the crush still affect him? Uh, if with adamant armor, yeah, cr well, uh, let's see, adamant, that protects you from instant death, and he'll, if he's back, if your character's back row, you should be okay with Yep. It should be fine. Yeah, those punches will just be uh, just a just a point of damage or two. So whoever you put it on is gonna be able to take on the evil wall, even if they're the only one left standing. All right, Martin is gonna go get his pool online, check out ordeals, drops off his uh, his hovercraft, and we're going to the forest. Yeah, Martin, Martin Brockcloak has something of a reputation for being unnaturally lucky with the chests here in these Chocobo Forests. Uh, just making a coffin today, but we haven't seen coffins anywhere yet, so who knows when a good instant death spell will <laughs> come in handy. Yeah, done that earlier, we would have had a, a quicker egg fight. I mean, they are, those, those chests are uh, weighted pretty well, so it's not the worst uh, first chest open. Yeah, they're uh, they're out of the way. They're because uh, they're not in a place you go. They're not in a place you have to be for an objective, and they're extremely well hidden. All 
Alright, we have a turtle in a pretty forgiving spot. You know, Zilch now on his uh, second of three trap chests here in uh, Castle Avalon, fighting the Mad Ogre chest. Uh, one of the places, strangely enough, where the Mute Knife will come in handy, since these Mad Ogres, in addition to being giants, are also mages. They know one spell, and it's Punch, but that counts, I guess. If, if we, the players get a Punch Mage, so do they. It's just somebody crammed all those ogres into a box, so they haven't had a chance to go round up their elemental claws like Young has. Uh, second is... spot on Martin is Octoman. Ooh. Got a lot of seafood up here on our deals. And you know, this is the spacious uh, box. There's better living quarters. You get into Zod and it just, I mean, into uh, into Babel, and those places are just not tenable. Four of them in a chest. <laughs> yeah, three in a chest is, uh, is, cu is cutting it. Wow. All right, Martin. and uh, I saw a very, a very big stick. Yep. Now we just need someone to wield it. On Martin's side, showing us the power of two mages nuking his way through the Octoman very quickly. Uh, getting food, getting Fusoya even more online and towards another key item. That'll be incentive to get him up Zod as quickly as possible. A couple of character checks in. If he's not in Zot and not on the moon, I don't know that we'll see uh, we'll see him unless uh, Darkness is buried behind Baron or something. Yeah, a, uh, a Cecil on the Giant, sometimes really anyone on the Giant is almost too late unless you're somehow getting through the Giant very early. Yeah, especially when by the time we do the Giant, we're probably moving on and beating the Siege here in 20 minutes or however long it takes. Oh. Here is another one of our freer fights out of the pool, the officer-soldier fight. Gonna chew through this in no time, but unfortunately that means you don't have the officer and soldier fight on the giant, so... <laughs> yeah, no elements officer-soldier there to use that coffin on. Uh, we might have something rude there. So it's just uh, cleaning up the last of the trap chests here. Going through the stone men and skulls, as predicted, those hourglasses have come in handy, have uh, stopped every one of these fights, so everyone's also getting a nice little chunk of XP out of these two. I see him casting virus, so that means he'll be pretty close to, to Quake himself. Alright, so if you were Martin now, where would you go? You've gotten your foo pretty close to full powered. Um, I want to do objectives as soon as I can. Um, and hope I spike crystal and then, I mean, darkness crystal, and then get some levels and finish off the seed. I do concur. I would, the weight of that many objective related key items burning a hole in my pocket would have me wanting probably to, probably to head up Zod or Magnus, especially since they're in the same neighborhood. Did we see sirens for sale? Yes, sirens are for sale in the Fey March. So, uh, with Sirens for sale in the Fey March and Hourglasses for sale in Dwarf Castle, uh, our runners could even grind just enough to get to the moon and then take on gold dragons for a large spike of power. See Martin doing just that, hitting some objectives. Um, he, he's going to do these two right by each other. We have Zod and Music. And off the back of that, maybe... Did we see how many key items he ends up with? Because the runners have to weigh in when they want to do their grind. Uh, we already have uh, looks like six key items, and darkness is on its way. So if through doing these objectives we get three more uh, key eyes, then then you're ready to, to to do a quicker grind. Whereas you could take a risk, hit your grind now, and then just go through but we also might have characters that uh we want more than our current team too especially uh zilch with his crystal sword yeah i would be very tempted if i were martin after doing cave magnus to go ahead and head up the tower of zot uh knock that out and then it puts you in baron where you're in perfect position to do another character check and another key item check possibly more if uh, one of these two objectives rewards you the baron key in the meantime. which would be great too with um that Hanzo steal flying around. 
Yeah, Edge would be fantastic. I've seen Murasames, I've seen pairs of long swords just ready to go before we even have a ninja to wield them. And uh, if we don't, if we don't find the Cecil, then you'll probably want someone to throw an Excalibur around, assuming we find the money. All right, we're getting a treasury check. Bad. We're getting weapon upgrades for our two uh, physical attackers here, and the defense sword for Kane and the earth hammer for. Uh, if we want to put an earth hammer on uh, Sid, we have the option now, as well as a Stardust Rod for our caster. Two Zeus gods. Are we about to hear something? Uh, yeah, looks like uh, DJ Spoonie B is going to play a song to break that magnetic spell, so uh, we're going to be quiet now. Nice of Edward to treat us to some of the phenomenal music from Chrono Cross. Uh, unfortunately, just receiving a Bahamut orb for his uh, trouble clearing out Cape Magnus, but uh, isn't music always worth it, especially when it's an objective that Martin's now completed? I think so. And yeah, Zilch, Zilch Martin, is hot on his tail for a reprise. <laughs> Martin, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, did the people a, a big favor there, and... Uh, gave us extended music by healing Mylan for quite a lot. By the way, not vamping the runner, that's I was reading his website there, Man the Myth Legend. Yeah, he said that. You can't blame us. <laughs> yeah, I uh, have to agree with uh, chat uh, with J-Mac. I don't think we're going to see Iridia tonight. It's probably a little late to uh, get her online. Uh, looks like we're going to get a reprise of the Chrono Cross music here, so uh, let's see how Zilch fares maybe. Uh, against the elements here. Thank <laughs> you. 
And there we go. Zilch through the uh, through even faster, getting his uh, disappointing Bahamut Pokeball. Uh, Martin going straight up the Tower of Zot, as I guess he might want to do in this case. And uh, stopping to see if he can find a Flame Dog here in the first couple chests. Just comes up with a Light Sword. Uh, probably going to head to the top and see who these characters are. This is another shot at uh, finding a Cecil or an Edge to uh, really round out the physical power of this party. Uh, it looks like Martin is a little bit uh, ahead, but without the power of that that crystal sword. So the location of Cecil right now is really uh, weighing heavy on advantage for either runner on this seed. Yeah, uh, these two have just kind of crossed over each other's tails, making similar moves, uh, if not the same at all times. Uh, and uh, now uh, Martin getting ready to see who the first boss is here, I think. The silk shot on his tail. And we have a punch mage. Yeah, we have our we have our hopelessly confused karate man, who unfortunately we won't get the shortcut tonight, and uh, we we have to clobber him until he comes back to his senses, which Vasilia is going to do with rocks. And that's swag, uh, rocks versus karate, and he is gone. Yeah, unlike elements, Yang does not absorb uh, holy meteors, so uh, he is gone. That is that is one way through that fight. I believe I see for so you getting exit. Uh, very nice spell to have in your party, and uh, we'll go on to see who's in spot two now. Uh, looks like we do have some flavor of Mylon at the second spot in Dwarf Castle, and Atella out here in the first room. That's two, uh, that, that's a definitive weak caster, depending on, I haven't seen if Fu has weak yet. Uh, should the runners opt for uh, D-Machine Grind? With Sirens on the table, that's not as likely, but we do need to go with the Giant, so. Uh, I know our runners like Fu. What about second Fu? <laughs> yeah, no, C no Cecil, uh, but second Fu. This definitely, I feel like, uh, is advantage Martin now. Uh, uh, we have, he has two foos, um, doesn't have a crystal sword that he's hoping to, to plug on uh, Cecil, and is just a little a little bit farther on his, his checks here, so, but yep. it's still very close. It looks like Martin has resolved to go full mage now, he picks up that second Fusilia over a Palum, just a straight upgrade, except an MP pool, and uh, takes Tella over Sid, probably hoping to use him as an anchor, since he's got that cursed ring, and, uh, Tella's not going to get too fast anyway. But the guy I had on, you have a guy I had. A boulder runners with a guy I had, uh, doing well with the means. Hat, hat, hat. Hat, hat, hat. And there's Tella getting that cursed ring right away. All right, now where to? Are we are we braving that wall yet? Are we grinding? Well, with two Fusilias, grinding becomes less advantageous because all you're really going to get him is more hit points. Uh, but possibly, I might I might want to do one more key item check if our runners are thinking about grinding just for that cane's sake. Because I believe if they come out with one here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they'll still be fairly short of ten, so they'd be grinding without the benefit of having the uh, ten key item experience bonus. And to your point, do you do you really need to grind if you uh, have two foos that can throw out nukes? Yeah, I mean, do you really just want to maybe let you know let, get blinked up, get uh, get which Tele can also help with until he gets punched? And uh, then just maybe throw nukes at the wall until it falls over. Yeah, uh, J Max saying find elixirs, head down hook route. We have elixirs; they are in Tomra, so our runners could uh, pick up a nice big bot, nice big batch of elixirs for them. So yeah, and go launch the falcon. Just some Hanzo steel for completing the Tower of Zot, but uh, it is an objective. And this Rubicon at the top not proving much of a uh, obstacle for Martin. Uh, probably not one for Zilch either. Not an obstacle for Sid, but um, he's not the most necessary uh, piece of our party to have HP with right now. 
Yeah, Sid's uh, Sid's window of use Sid's window of usefulness is kind of closing fast. Uh, Martin going to Baron Inn, finding Ridia guarded by a plague, uh, which won't be too difficult at all. I'm just curious what will be behind it at this point. We do have the Hornet hanging out. I mean, we have a a, a lot of wealth options for damage. I don't know that you need the Hornet right now, but I mean, you could take it. <laughs> Two Lunar Sparkles out of the way. The D-Lunars and the Plague, both uh, both waiting here in Baron Inn. So if we see a Sparkle at this point, it's going to be uh, one of our dragons, I believe. Uh, chat asking, is Martin only one boss fight ahead? Martin has completed the ordeals, so while he only appears to be a little bit ahead of Zilch, he's actually a lot ahead in terms of power. Uh, for his twin Fusolios. Picks up the package. Uh, probably not going to see that get done tonight. And also a Rydia, who we bid adieu. Continue to see Zilch follow in his footsteps, uh, doing this plague also. No Blarg tonight for Mark. No, not so much. Oh, Martin thinking about heading underground. Doesn't just yet. Oh, he's, he's, he might be heading underground a different direction. Yeah, Martin reasoning with the power of two full power Fusilias, there's not much that's going to stand the chance here on the hookout. He's uh, hit the overworld. <laughs> uh, he needs to go to underground anyway. Um, might as well take the long way, knock out your objective, and then head to where you're going anyway. Ooh, and we have Bacchus and Coffin. Both very good items. Yeah, Bacchus very nice here. Zilch picking up his package from uh, from the Baron Inn. Wonder if he might go peek that since he's got that crystal sword uh, sitting in his inventory. Maybe he uh, is slightly more incentivized to find a Cecil. Oh man, taking that time to the to, to take Cecil would be pretty good. Yeah, with, I, I would with be how with how little time is remaining till uh, someone's typing dot done likely. Uh, that's that is that would be a big gamble but maybe one that pays out if uh we have something very rude on the giant yeah maybe maybe you just go look maybe you maybe you don't necessarily want it right now thought maybe if he was saving that's where you're thinking about going but zilch instead going underground are we uh are we gonna go hunt trap chests in the uh self cave is that what's happening here well, cecil is not in the hook route we have Forum, so running out of places to find him. Yeah, at this point, uh, we've got the moon, we've got the giant, uh, we have the package. Is there anywhere else I'm forgetting? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, just just Baron. Oh yeah, Baron Castle and Dwarf Castle. We do still have those two. We haven't actually uh, we haven't actually seen uh, so other than catching a peek at that Mylon at the second spot of Dwarf Castle, which we can intuit from the Tower of Zod. We haven't actually seen uh, the first boss in Dwarf Castle, or the key item, or the character. We do have Zilch uh, doing trap chests. I wonder if he's trying to spike uh, an adamant um, for that wall. I have to assume that's on his mind. Uh, probably uh, would have preferred to find a pink tail by now to get a guaranteed one, but if you can uh, get one here out of the uh, out of the silk chest, then that's definitely going to make your uh, evil wall fight. Uh, a breeze. You're really hoping not to see more crystal swords. A Leviathan orb. <laughs> not sure which is worse. <laughs> this isn't my favorite fight to see uh, down here. Uh, I, I, my quake doesn't always take them out, but in this case, uh, we have a Stardust Rod, Soric Robe. Uh, top slot, so he makes quick work of them. And more defense swords. Yeah, Kane can only wield one. Uh, Martin finding the first boss in the King Queen Evelyn spot on the hook route, and it is the Dark Elf. Not gonna pose much of a threat here. He'll be through this in no time. A power, power shirt. shirt. Is, uh, nice. Yeah, that's a good pickup for Kane, who I believe is wearing a diamond armor, which defensively, great, uh, but offensively, not so good. Notice that, uh, <laughs> notice that Zilch has a rune ring just sitting in his inventory there, too. We have an inventory boss down here. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the real tough part when you're opening this many chests fighting the inventory boss. Meanwhile, Martin is flying through the hook route. We have a purple robe. So that's our other Mylon. <laughs> One of our Fusilia is unfortunately catching the uh, receiving end of a bad breath, and there's an atom of armor. There it is. <laughs> That's what Zilch uh, spent that time investment yep. for, is rewarded. We'll see if he runs right to that uh, door. Oh, yeah, he's, well, maybe? No? Oh, one more Cecil, one this. more Cecil check here in Dwarf. <laughs> Gotta check. If you can have your Crystal Sword Adam and Armor Cecil, then why wouldn't you, I guess? But we're gonna we're put not... the Adam on Foo for now. He can hold it. If we switch to, uh... If we switch it, uh, well, that fool will already be cursed, so he can be cursed and have all the weaknesses that that adamant glitch uh, will give you. Don't think uh, he'll mind. Uh, answer a question from Zed. Did Zilch fade Zot? Uh, no, Zilch has definitely been through Zot because he has the second Fusoya, who was on the top of Zot. Uh, we just need to uh, light up the fourth objective there. Oh. Oh, no. Did this... we equip those Ooh. ribbons? I guess we have an adamant on, so... Yeah, we have an adamant on, but oh, this is a time sink for a character check, essentially. And maybe trying to spike the darkness crystal, I guess. Martin brought a cloak running through Mylon there. Uh, we'll be launching the Falcon soon for objective number five. Zolch so has to sit through the ha-ha-ha. You could reset out and get your... Turn everyone into pigs and, and whatnot, but... Uh... With a crystal ring, that should break the... We have somebody that can break the, the hold, and then with adamant armor, we should be fine. Yeah, there we go. So hopefully you just hope that uh, maybe Shadow wastes his time trying to eat the um, Fusoya in the adamant armor here, and uh, then you just plow through the skull mist. Or it's Kane. That's fine. Sorry, Kane. <laughs> We're still searching for that darkness crystal. Yeah, it looks like uh, with the power for Soya, uh, Martin is looking to head down into the Fate March. Probably going to go fight that evil wall very soon. That'll be exciting. Do your objectives. Something, something. Plus, we do have K Summon on on this flag set, so it is possible that that's also where our Darkness Crystal is. And the way this seed is going so far, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if that's where it is. We have a Sura up here, too, in the King spot. Um, we have Mute Knives, we have Wall. It's uh, not the fastest check right now, but it's also not one that's going to pose any danger to our runners no definitely not although for uh for martin those uh counter those counter punches are gonna hurt there in that leviathan spot we'll see so. if he, he opts to blink up first if he does check it yeah the nice part nice part about asara is she will give you all the time you need to prepare all right zilch really crossing his fingers here for a cecil i'm assuming it finds an edge not bad it's not the guy, yeah, we have a, he's we, the other we, guy. <laughs> got that Hanzo steel, and we have a lot of stuff to dart, too. And dumps one of his Fusoyas. Ow. Interesting. Uh, not the one with the Adam and Armour, notably. Uh, Mylon Z, the, uh, or Zed here, the one for uh, second boss here. And Evil Wall. Martin getting that Evil Wall fight now. Evil Wall <laughs> kindly knocking Tella over immediately. <laughs> But not bothering with uh with, with any safety with blinks we're just going to plow through this evil wall we have lots of nukes yeah luckily the uh the Osiris spot has decent physical power but not like it is if it was in the king spot so as we saw doing about 200 damage to those back road foos uh 500 to that one kane might take a uh hit here and fall over but fusoya can hopefully shoot through the evil walls hit points uh, before the evil wall gets through his, but evil wall is a cheating jerk who likes to uh, start chains where you don't get to do anything. So uh, 
it's it's really just a race here. Only so, a moon ooh. veil, which uh, you, usually you might want that before facing evil wall, but when you have it adamant and you are in a race to find the darkness crystal and you just spent time going through two bosses at dwarf, uh, that's not what you want to see. Yeah, this cannot feel good for Zilch. I mean, yeah, you got edge, but everything else about that was kind of kind of oof. Uh, looks like Zilch now going to take the power of his adamant and a moon veil and go fight the evil wall that Martin has just defeated on his side. So let's see what evil wall is hanging on to. A spoon for a bard who hasn't appeared in this seat. <laughs> but it is another key item closer to 10. And it is an objective. And it'll help uh, in Zilch's position. He has edge, so... If he follows the same order, uh, that Asura will go down that quad nine much faster. Yeah, so uh, if you if you can't if you don't have a bard to hang on to that spoon, then you've got you've got edge to just let it rip. Alright, Zilch now saving, our two runners high fiving at the safe at the safe spot in the Fey March. Everybody camping out before we go over to fight Osra. We see that mute knife going on to Kane on Martin's side. Uh, as Osra is a mage, that mute knife will rip through her hit points. Uh, and Zilch probably going to. Well, Zilch. I was going to say he's got two, so he could. Uh, I don't think that actually helps at any point, but he's at least got enough that he can, you know, wield one, maybe throw another. <laughs> I expect to see some reflected nukes um, onto this Osra as well. With the dessert came. Interesting shuffling of gear here, putting the power shirt onto the uh, onto the uh, onto the edge, and the adamant armor onto the cane. Uh, yeah, we, we're seeing the preference, and th these these uh, seeds really do uh, benefit Zerker Zerker strats. So Zilch here with. Uh, uh, dropping the food definitely wants to go Zerker. I definitely agree. Uh, Martin now uh, bouncing nukes off of the other Fusilia onto Osra, which is really nice because it will not trigger her counter scripts in any way. Although that jump from Kane will <laughs> once again kindly punching Della for you. And Osra has a wall up as well, so her uh, her own the few heals she does get off will go right into our party. We see these runners really close to each other, searching for that darkness crystal. Zilch is taking the time to to find some items and has adamant armor that's definitely going to help, and a crystal sword that's not so much. But uh, we'll see uh, it, if it makes a difference. This looks like it could be coming down to the wire. Yeah, it is. It is amazing the amount these two have managed to get done uh, and still be right on each other's tails like this. Uh, you know, Martin doing a few additional checks. Uh, to get Fusoya online earlier, Zilch doing uh, Zilch doing things to look for better equipment for his Berserkers, leaning towards a more physical route. Whereas Martin seems pretty well set on his double foo and friend and friend uh, party here. Osra goes down and has the Baron key for us. The Baron key, okay. So I imagine he'll chase that. Now I see a Luca key for Martin, but not for Zilch. Is that confirmed? Because that could be a big deal. Sorry, I, uh, I actually missed the question there. Oh, I see a Luca key for Martin, but not for Zilch. Yes, If Luca... that is where the Darkness Crystal is, that could come into play. Yep, Luca was the reward for Mount Ordeals. Uh, so Martin is one potential important key item up, although Luca, the Luca K not a check anybody really likes doing, but uh, it could be make or break here. I would be tempted if I were Martin to save Scummit before going up to Baron just because you, know, you at least you figure out whether you need it or not. Yep, that 45 second check uh, to go mode is, is pretty appealing until it becomes the tower key and, and you have a chain. But yeah, I would be, I'd be tempted for that too. Again, you're, you're, you might be thinking your opponent might not have done uh, that Asura spot, and I have something that he might not. And you're frantically searching for that darkness crystal, so probably a lot of nerves going right now. It's true. Our uh, tracker, Jim Echolabrian, pointing out uh, Luca, Keyless Tower, and Baron Castle are where our runners have to look now, so 
Martin opting for Lucas since he's got that key in his back pocket, and I can't blame him. So uh, while we're watching him run down a cave here, again, I just want to give a shout-out, besides our two excellent runners, shout-out to uh, Reckless Charlie for the restream tonight, and uh, J. Mac the Librarian pushing all the buttons and making everything light up so that you know, we don't have to wonder if they've uh, you know seen X or grabbed Y item yet. Martin fearlessly going down the rope of the rope of Runex, and um, might have wish she did this earlier. That would have been pretty nice against the Sura, but uh, we've seen the sisters already too, so that might not be uh, overly helpful for the rest of the season. Yeah, not. Uh, and with the guards and the other guards uh, and the Mad Ogres, uh, at least the ones our runners want to fight out of the way, not a lot of mages left standing. So uh, it's. Uh, it's a decent hit and stick, but I think our runners already have bigger. Martin taking a safety save here, just in case this is something nasty like a wyvern at the bottom, but an item that he does want to walk out. And uh, we'll find out once the bottom of Seal Cave, while Zilch gets into this uh, Osra fight. Looks like he's opted for some of the same strategies with a wall. Uh, Kane is jumping, Edge throwing darts here. He may throwing some of those lesser holy swords. Oh, There's the darkness crystal. Man. Well, that is a big advantage and yeah. a huge advantage in Martin's favor because yeah. uh, Zilch will likely last. He's faded for deals so far. We haven't seen Cecil. Uh, there's no reason to go there. Uh, and uh, and Martin is in go mode. Yeah, and it is with it being ordeals is something our runners do tend to fade a lot on these flags, and in this case, it may end up burning Zilch. Yeah, we, we saw that sand ruby on Earth earlier, so I guess we should have known that Antlion wouldn't be in his natural habitat. Yeah, Antlion, uh, Antlion very confused, thinking if he can't go to the moon, he can at least go to where the darkness crystal is. Uh, unfortunately, he's not gonna, not gonna get, not gonna punch for very much, and also these, uh, these nukes are just laying into him and will not trigger his counter script, so Martin is, Martin is out of the sealed cave with the darkness crystal and go mode. And Martin's probably feeling pretty good because um, he has largely beelined his objectives. You know, there hasn't been there haven't been a lot of zonks. You know, he didn't he didn't do Baron um, or Tower. He did he did have a, a Baron key from uh, from Asura, but he didn't chase it, and that's something that maybe his opponent did may very well do so i imagine he's feeling pretty good right now but in these jet seats i mean i think no matter what you're kind of nervous yeah it is it's just as likely that martin is reasoning okay my opponent also had early access to those double fusolias they possibly also did ordeals to get the uh you know to get their foos three extra bosses worth of spells you know are they right on my tank or am i behind even uh 50, 55 minutes and we're in go mode uh, two objectives left to light up on Martin's side. Uh, might hard to say how he's feeling right now, but definitely no question about where he's going to go next. No, we're not actually going to see the moon this time, are we? Unless we get well, we, no pass. We will well, go to the moon. Yeah, we have no pass, uh, so we'll at least have to see Cave Bahamut, and then we'll get to see the rest of the moon as Spartan runs past it. <laughs> All right, Zilch cheers through the Asra and gets the Baron Key uh, himself. So now I have to wonder, with uh, without Luca available there, is he thinking yeah. now that he should go pursue Baron? Because if so, we know this is just going to lead him down a rabbit hole. Not only is he going to want to, is he going to be inclined to chase his key item he just got, but he's still looking for Cecil to use uh, that crystal sword with. So, in a sense, the crystal sword is actually harming, uh, harming him because he unknowingly is in, uh, is going to chase something bad for something he's incentivized to do. Yeah, the only way this is a positive is if he can get through here quickly enough to get Cecil, and then that Cecil leads him to do Mount Ordeals. Oh, uh, or if he gets the pass here. Also if he true. gets a pass and Cecil, all of a sudden he picks up a few minutes. But uh, 
from there, you know, he'd have to go, he'd have to go to Luca, and also Martin has already launched the Falcon, so there's yeah, he... there's a lot to overcome. Really, he's probably hoping. Now Martin doesn't have uh, an adamant armor. If there's something very challenging on the giant here, um, that is Zilch's best chance. Yeah, Zilch, uh, Zilch's best hope right now, honestly, is that Martin runs into something up here that stops him hard. Um, I, you know, I obviously don't want to count any eggs before they hatch, but this really does seem like uh, Martin's race to lose at this point. Even like like some rude bosses like a, a Blarg, uh, you, you can get through that. It's just slow. Yeah, we've already seen uh, the Kainatsu, which would be rude up here. We've already seen. Uh, I mean, we haven't seen some of our dragons. Without MP restoratives and and life potions, a uh, Blarg, that's 64,000 HP, a Blarg is a lot of HP. Well, luckily, before he went down Luka Cave, I believe Martin's... Uh, actually, that might be Zilch. I'm going to mix it up. Somebody bought a, uh, a lot of elixirs. <laughs> and I think, well, we got something I think it was slow. Martin before diving into Luka. <laughs> Got something Ooh. slow, but uh, unfortunately for Zilch, this is going to go down faster to double nukes than it would even probably uh, a, a Cecil, who would likely yeah. be low level at this point and resists uh, holy damage. Yeah, 65,000 hit points goes a lot slower when it's resisting the swings of your biggest hitter, and he's maybe doing a couple thousand a swing. And this is a fight where if you want to Berserk, you either need to time it so that maybe you're doing it on the second cycle and you know you can finish, or you do some some stuff to make them quit swinging during the interim. Yeah, double nuke, though. No. I mean, if you're going to face 64,000 uh, hit points of Demas, uh, and having two two new casters is pretty nice yep uh confirming there that martin is the one who has that pile of elixirs and also has some ether twos five five elixirs four ethers that's not too bad um, yeah, we're gonna be through fine yeah zilch finding uh calcabrina here on the uh baron throne i believe uh not a big obstacle uh getting through his character check getting through this quickly really hoping this gets him something to kind of lure him back onto the right track we are not going to see the big doll today. No, definitely not. Between Flame and Quake, uh, Edge Edge is a mage sometimes when he wants to be. Oh, Edge not even going to get off of Flame. Fusoya here just handling it all by himself. Okay, kind of hoping for uh, Zulch's sake, at least. Oh, no. Oh, it's a Yong. Duke. Oh, no. Oh, actually, no, I saw a, a Yong earlier, and he wasn't on our side. So not our dupe, but not Cecil either. Yeah, our uh, our dupe this uh, I believe Fusoya is our dupe this then. That's true. There's two two Fus down here nuking. <laughs> it's so I'm rare sure to see two Fusoyas. <laughs> so I guess if there is a Cecil, he's either on the moon, which no one's checked yet, or he's on the giant, or oh, it could be at the package because I don't believe anybody's peeked at that just because of how slow it is. Zilch at this point got to be racking his brain. What have I missed? Uh, oh, got no. The, got the pan. Oh, no. So here comes the another pan, rabbit so hole. More, more rabbit hole, yep. Because it's feasible. That, so we've got a couple pieces of forge that could be behind this. We've got the tails. We've got the uh, the tower key. So there's still a number of ways this rabbit hole could continue leading Zilch astray. And on Martin's side, just patiently waiting for the demons to come back up to continue to eat more nukes. And we might go back to Baron too, even because uh, after these don't pan out, no pun intended, um, we will still be looking for a darkness crystal and there'll still be a basement. Hey, own your puns. <laughs> yeah, we've still got that Odin throne, and it is, uh, again, another. another... Another distraction. Another way off the critical path here. Martin has nuked that D-Mist down, uh, getting a nice chunk of XP for Kane. And 
uh, we'll probably we'll probably go back and save. I have to imagine it wasn't difficult, but it was time consuming. And then we'll see who's at the CPU spot. We are going back and taking a save because uh, D-Mist is nice, but we don't want to see it twice. Zilch is, uh, Zilch is doing the pan-related tasks, it looks like. Oof. And for her sake, we're hoping for Zonks this time. <laughs> yes. Stop leading, leading him astray, please, Seed. So, in that case, the worst thing I could give him here would be maybe a rat tail into a tower key, or vice versa. <laughs> okay, Just the full moon. moon for his edge. Oh, now we could back row that edge. I saw that. I saw that pause before he left. I believe that was the pause of what next. <laughs> While Bygan is uh, unleashing fury on people. Oof! Yeah, Bygan, fast and punchy here. Uh, so we take away his arms. He still punches somehow. I don't get it either. That was a quick recovery too, but. We have Oof. lots of foos, and a lot of foos to solve a lot of problems. Yeah, these uh, these quakes will keep taking his arms off. They'll do damage to the uh, the body as well because they don't care about wall. Zulch wow. is taking advantage of the zonk to back row his edge, but it looks like he's then going to use it to go check the Odin throne. He is checking. We are the, back to bear. Looking. As you commit to your fades, uh, that's going to put uh, Ordeals basically dead last. Yeah, Ordeals is going further and further into the back of this binder here. Getting some swag, swag rocks. rocks. <laughs> <laughs> going to have to change his name to Martin Swag Cloak after all these quad nines. These foos are casually dropping on everyone. Well, these foos are not looking so good. Ooh, fact, no. Fact. Oof. Oh, no. Martin, Martin takes a wipe. This is this is one of the things Zilch needs. It's not enough to catch up, but that's the kind of things that Zilch needs to happen. Zilch uh, needs uh, Bygen to become Rocky Balboa here and uh, and win about five times in a row. Yeah, Bygen, uh, Bygen apparently uh, taking the role of Ivan Drago here, looking at Fu and saying, if he dies, he dies. Or, right. you know, he, he's all, he could be taking the role of... Uh, of uh, Mr. T and saying, I pity the food. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you for setting me up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zilch through the Dark Knight on the Odin throne. A fairly free fight, even though Edge is taking a nap at the end of it. Uh, we know this is a Zonk. It's a Zonk with a ribbon. Yeah, yeah, don't don't walk that third out. <laughs> you don't this need time, more ribbons. This time we're blinking up uh, our characters over here. Yeah, we're putting some blinks on the foos, so it's not quite so spooky. I believe uh, chat says that he also dropped a battle speed in three, yeah, which yep. helped. Uh, BS three right before uh, foo number two still goes down, but oh, Zilch God. doing Zilch doing keyless tower, doing everything except ordeals. Mid tier uh, phase before doing ordeals. <laughs> It's a good strategy, and sometimes the rando is going to random. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what's at the top here. Is this another key item, or are a few more rabbit holes located on the moon? We're running kind of low on rabbit holes, and if it's tower, we're already there. So hopefully uh, the, the seed is on rando wings here. We can just reset out and go do our ordeals. I get bouncing walls onto other people now. How helpful, because now uh, Martin can launch those nukes onto Biden. <laughs> okay, here's another Lunar Sparkle. I believe this is either Pale Dim, Ogopogo, Bahamut, or, or no, Pale Dim, Ogopogo, or Wyvern. So this could be interesting if it's Wyvern. And I didn't see if what his uh, battle speed is. It is uh, not Wyvern standard time. <laughs> I know that much. Just bailed him. Do, 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 do. I love the sound of slow in the morning. 
Thank you, J Mac. <laughs> we are we are through Bye again. There we go. Martin Broncliffe knocks off the Giant of Babel, completing yet another objective, and uh, it is going to be the ultimate irony if this is where Cecil is hiding. <laughs> yeah, that would be insult injury for Zilch here after everything he's done to get Cecil here. And, and here it is. Here he is. We got a paladin hiding on the Giant. Zilch receiving just a wizard hat for his keyless tower play. You know what? When, when he does get to Z, uh, he will have a, a shiny sword. Yes, he will. Looks like Maybe not a, a lot of levels, but, you know, a shiny sword. Not a lot, but he'll, he'll have a shiny sword and probably that Adam armor. There Possible. we go. Possible. I guess if he does uh, giant first, then uh, maybe get some levels down on the hunter out. Yeah, I imagine he probably will since he didn't... Uh, uh, it depends on whether he launches the falcon before he does darkness related tasks because if he launches the falcon first then it makes sense to run it the same way martin is here you go to the giant and you go to cave bahamut and then you want to swipe walk down the moon if not then he might be thinking to do cave bahamut come back and do the giant and then from there you're right next to evelyn cave to launch the falcon which then he has to go back and do the moon again so that would be very bad routing so hopefully that's not what he's doing <laughs> We might see even some, like, uh, a couple Bayonauts to get him online, so we'll see. Might see. So, uh, there's Zilch running through the, uh, running through ordeals now. Going to get his Luka key very soon. Zilch now back on the critical path. Answer a question from chat. Slingshot doesn't work on these flags because we have a maximum party size of four. In order for the Slingshot, the catch-up XP, to work, our runners would need to have a full party of five. Because it is based We've on seen D enough D-money in ZZ4. <laughs> yeah, we saw enough D-monies in ZZ4. This also means that when you get characters like Rydia early, you're not incentivized to keep them on the floor to give them XP later. Uh, you, can, you can keep doing them later. Leviathan, meanwhile, hanging out in Bahamut's place. Uh, the summons just doing a little shuffle. Uh, he's less effective here. Um, very weak magic. Um, and 25% uh, HP on the waves, so he's going to go down pretty quickly. Yeah, this is, he has this, a lot of HP. This is a spot where you do not want to see a punchy boss, because uh, for some reason Bahamut, who never physical attacks, has an extremely high physical attack. But finding something like Leviathan here is almost kind of a break. Zilch digging into his uh, bag of forgotten J items to uh, zap the officer soldier fight here. Uh, Luka Key in his back pocket by now, I assume. And we'll be ready to well, head down underground. Meanwhile, the Foo Twins are asking, how many nukes do we have to cast? Should we be casting Lit 3 instead? No, that, that's slow. <laughs> well, I did see a Lit 3 come out, but yeah, Nuke yeah. Is, is doing about the same damage as Lit 3. Um, and, yeah, after, uh, smart, yeah, after a while, Lit 3 is just kind of, or Nuke is just kind of the hammer, and everything is the nail. Martin getting a white shirt, but more importantly, Martin completing his, his seventh objective and getting his crystal. He is fully ready and probably willing and able to march on right down to Zeromus right now. Yep, uh, we do want to see the moon a little bit, the lunar subterrain. He's going to walk by, wave, say hello, and um, fight something. Just leave us to speculate which bosses are hiding in which altars and not really care about fighting any of them. <laughs> Alright, and Zilch on his way to go mode as well. Yep, bringing these foos, bringing foo back home to, uh, with other foo to clean up his, uh, to uh, clean up Zeromus. So just going ahead and launching the Falcon, probably thinking now Falcon straight into Luka is his best option. Uh, probably has to be feeling behind after discovering that Ordeal's Fade uh, is not the, not the play today. Yeah, you spent a lot of time investing in trap chests uh, and then last locationing uh, the Darkness Crystal. You're definitely feeling behind, but you haven't seen a dot done yet. Um, so I guess you're hoping that your opponent also lasts location in this case. Yep, 
And I mean, that's really the best you can do. Hope that your hope your opponent made the same saved the same plays. <laughs> Martin Telling Rosa, no, thank you. You have shown up too late. I'm very happy with my two Fusoyas, an old man and a cane, and heading down the lunar subterrain. Everybody wave at the altars as we pass them by. Presumably, we've got some nice stuff headed up here that we'll never see, and some bosses we'll never fight. And they're probably pretty rude too, given all the free bosses we saw earlier. Yeah, there's still a uh, there's a king queen Evelyn lurking around here somewhere, but uh, you know, you've also still got your Ogopogos and your wow, uh, and we didn't see Wyvern yet, so Wyvern the trick bird's still around here somewhere too. But Martin is not the biggest jerk bird of, in the, of them all, is Aromas. Yeah, so um, I did see one one flag. Yeah, chat chat must be tired tonight. They're not putting up their Z flags at all, even though we are very much on the way there. We got a, a bit of a journey. Usually, they uh, there's more preparation. There's more seed done. We're closer to 28 out of 28. Uh, we're usually closer to the actual Zeramus fight. Um, tonight we are just zooming on down. Um, and uh, in the rando, we have bosses all over the place. You can meet anyone anywhere, except um, having big bangs going off at, in uh, Fabul is just not going to cut it. So uh, instead of having a, a randomized uh, Z, they put, have them in the same spot, but they do have a different sprite. Is what, over 500? Uh, Custom sprites at this a point. pool of over 550 sprites that Zeromus can be wearing to spice up this fight. So I believe uh, after we walk through a few floors of crystalline moon terrain, uh, there'll be an important question. I believe so. The question, as always, is whose butt will we be kicking tonight? As I'm trying to get popularized, what cosplay is Zeromus wearing today? Oh, then, you know, Martin thought about it. Martin thought about it. Faking us out. I thought at the top that he was going to go to the other, uh, the other Hanzo Steel altar. Well, in these flags, you know, you're not walking down that often. Uh, you're doing so much. Often you have the pass. Um, so if you actually come to this spot, you're usually here to do the altar. So I think we might have got a little muscle memory out of Martin. Yep, I believe it. No, nope, he's just heading around and down. Gonna drop his battle speed so that he can safely do this with no soap webs. And uh, Martin's just gonna focus on laying into Foo, or laying into, uh, excuse me, laying into Zeromas with these nukes from these twin Foos. We're on uh, battle speed six, I believe. And, yep. Uh, we are just going to um, waylay. Uh, with a, a bunch of nukes. Maybe maybe Kane throwing in a little bit of extra damage. Yeah, possibly uh, possibly using Kane early on to help push close to the uh, HP tip point without actually going over it. Possibly just using Kane as another person to throw elixirs at Fu. That's why you've got elixirs in Ether 2s, and Fusoya has a really bad MP pool, so we'll need to keep these two stocked up with those using 50, 50 cast for those. Uh, Excuse me for those uh, nukes. I'm kind of hoping. I know there's a lot of ancillary questions about uh, about Z. I'm kind of hoping he has a hat. I've seen one with a hat recently. Hat would be good. A hat would be nice for the memes. Although, as we all know, there are no memes in the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise community. I'm not sure, we're very serious people. Alright, here come his true colors. It's a pink pop! <laughs> oh, that's so good! I could not have Charlie. asked for more. Oh, Charlie. You've done, you've, you've done us all proud. There's a giant pink puff. I think nice. a pink puff with a cowboy hat would look really stylish. <laughs> well, uh, all we have to do is uh, pay whoever wins to uh, suggest that as their Z spray. I found new motivation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is my this is my reasoning for getting better now to suggest pink pat and pink puff and a cowboy atlas. We can workshop it. 
Well, that's interesting. We're, we're reflecting light. Um, probably so that we didn't have to waste a turn. Uh, white takes a while to cast, and, then, and you're kind of just swinging at nothing on battle speed 6. So that was a pretty heads-up play by Mark. Yeah, uh, Scarlet Pink Puff with a hat. Uh, cowboy hat. Guy cowboy hat. hat is what I thought. Oh, well, yeah, guy hat. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of hats look good. Just really any hat on a Pink Puff, because Pink Puffs are stylish. And uh, yeah, you are correct about the uh, the white prevents you. Also, that Fu has a white shirt on, so possibly a little more powerful on that side. But uh, it does prevent him from wasting a turn casting into nothingness. Poor Portella has levels. He's up, he's up to a very hefty HP pool of 902, but still not enough. Yeah, he, he has reached the lofty heights of characters like Edward with a few levels, but unfortunately that's not enough even for a... Uh, So uh, what we're doing here, uh, by reflect anytime in, in Final Fantasy IV, uh, if you if you can reflect a spell off, you skip any scripts that uh, the monster has. And uh, one of Fu's scripts is to refill his HP. So if you are reflecting all your damage, you only have to go through half his HP, and that's what we're seeing Mark do to great effect right now. Yep, they wanted to give uh, Zeromas a very high amount of HP, but uh, they were limited by the constraints of the Super NES, so it's at one point uh, he stops and refills his HP with him, but not when our runners are reflecting these spells, which is also why you probably won't see Kane doing any direct damage instead of just handing out elixirs. That would be the ultimate betrayal. If he just... Taking a swing. Oh, just yep. miss, miss menus and swings and hits the pink buffness. Oof. Math and Magician in the chat, Possum Morpheus, saying that uh, Martin has already pushed out 50k damage into the Seromus, so it shouldn't be too much longer now before we uh, see the uh, death of Seromus. On this side, Zilch picking up the Darkness Crystal at the bottom of Luke Cave. Heading out to fight the non threatening boss here. And head down the hook route, too, so getting closer to finishing, wrapping this up. Yep, he is unfortunately trailing behind Martin, and unfortunately does not appear that Martin is going to screw up. <laughs> you, you, you don't want to see that big bang uh, when you're doing reflex traps, but uh, we do got some elixirs flying out. We're refilling uh, Foo's MP and uh, Kane's HP. Very heads up, waiting there on the on the wall there to wait for the veil. I mean, for the black hole to come out. Yep, waiting on that black hole to come out and validate our star mail, so we can put up another one and uh, resume with the nukes. Both, both foos actually surviving and under the Big Bang with their party HP pools, and there goes Pinkless. I see him dropping GG to Martin Broadcloak, the winner of this play-in match with a final time. Looks like uh, 120. Yep, looking good, and uh, we'll probably be joined by Martin soon. Yep, that sound tells me that we are joined by Martin Broadcloak. Martin, hey, that's me. GG's. <laughs> we heard you like uh, Jet Seeds, Martin. Not, uh, uh, why, why, why do you guys do this to me? I was, I was so happy when I saw the giant. I'm like, okay, this is going to start out. This is my wheelhouse, and then it turned into a jet, and it's like, great, I'm against the guy I don't want to be a jet again. Fantastic. Well, fortunately yeah. for you, you uh, you jetted through your objectives, and uh, they did not lead you astray. Yeah. Yeah, I... <laughs> uh, after talking with Zilch, uh, post-race, uh, finding out that he faded ordeals was was huge i don't get me wrong i love foo but boy sometimes does his spells they they need some work sometimes <laughs> and yeah. i didn't exactly like have the party for ordeals like i had no reason to go ordeals except for the fact i had exactly foo so it's like yes give me more spells yeah, i appreciate it oh go ahead 
Oh, I was going to say, uh, that made perfect sense at the time. And getting that Luca key in your back pocket was really the uh, really the turning point there, although we didn't know it at the time. Mm -hmm. I think, we appreciate uh, it. I think at one point we figured that it was that the options were Luca, Keyless Tower, or the Baron Key, and everything turned out to be a zonk except Luca. Yeah, I, I when so as I start, you know, routed all this and you know, Twin Harp into Earth and to Baron in, I I thought about I was gonna go back underground there for a second, and it's like, yeah, now nah, just go do the hook route. There's nothing here that scares me. Val's already out of the pool, and I have Kane, so eh, whatever. Um, did that came down? I saw the sparkle on top of Lower Babel, and I thought about it. I'm like, eh, whatever's up here, nah, most things don't like nuke. But it's like, nah, I'll just go deal with this wall. Maybe that'll just give me, you know, darkness crystal and I won't be wasting my time. Um, that obviously didn't work, nor did, uh, nor did Asura to the left of it. But yeah, Luca with the goods and uh, D-Mist, always a great time to find D-Mist with two nuke casters. Um, <laughs> Bygen? Eh, not so much. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that was I. I did not expect a foo and foo and friends seed. That that was a shock when I saw that second foo on Zot. I I my brain was just like, eh. But as soon as I saw it, I had a plan. I knew elixirs were for sale in Tamra, and yeah, things just all came together. So attempted were you to chase that there and key when you got it. Uh, that was going to be my next play. So basically, it, we, we know it's a minute and eight seconds to go spy Luca. If Luca didn't have what I wanted, I was going straight to Baron. So I, I was going to fade. Here. Yeah, I was going to fade lower battle. That, that was going to be my last check. So. We appreciated uh, all those swag rocks, but some of those didn't work out so good. We yeah, uh, did, a did, big you, heal. Did, you like, did you like my meme? So here's the funny part. My brain even told me, wait, I've done this before. Don't medio elements. And then I did it anyways, for good measure. Like, I I don't know why I pushed the A button there. I, didn't, I got nothing. We did like the longer music. That was a double benefit for our part. So thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. And, was... <laughs> and, and, we and we later... assumed you were just doing it for the people, because you're a man of the people. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm, I'm a man of the people. What can I say? <laughs> so, yeah, that was fun. Then we got those... um, yeah, no, I mean, Medio sometimes has its uses. Um, just very rare to have the opportunity to fire it, let alone, you know, a couple times during the run, so, yeah. Our last uh, Meteo cast there uh, didn't quite finish off Bygen, and yeah. took a wipe. How were you feeling on a Jet C taking uh, a wipe? Not great. That not great. That, that was one where I was counting, and that that body was in the neighborhood of, like, 18, 19,000. With that Meteo firing, I'm like, great, I left it short. And when the arms came back, I'm like, okay, just please just go entangle. I knew the vampire wouldn't kill me. Just do those two and let me get one more spell off. And the fight's over. And, well, I got punched in the next week. But that's okay. At least you had the, the sage instinct to save after d -mist. Yeah, you, well, you never know what's at that spot. I mean, I, I understand. When you're racing someone up zilch's caliber especially someone that just obscenely excels at hyper jet low level amazingness um you can't afford that and yeah most bosses aren't going to stand up to a pair of foos but there's always that one <laughs> so saving yeah not saving before cpu was not an option for me So you've survived the Ogre Axe group. You're moving on to brackets. You're, you're, and it must be near your final form, uh, having run against a lot of bracket level opponents already. How, how are you feeling going into the next round? Exhausted. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> there's, I'm glad there's a week and a half now before we get to that part. So. But no, I'm, I'm looking forward to brackets. You know, people that know me know that I get better the more difficult the flags get. So I'm I'm very excited for brackets. Um, I know it's waiting in my side of the bracket. So, oh joy. So we're, we're gonna have to pull out a couple tricks, but uh, 
yeah, we'll see what we can do. And yeah, I, I, it's going to be fun. Yeah, be there fun. is okay. the, uh, there is the looming shadow of uh, pancakes over that, uh -huh, that quadrant. Yeah. But first we have to get Crystal Ring Group to quit tying so that we can find someone for you to play. Wait, wait, well, hold on. I thought we weren't supposed to say the T word. <laughs> Uh, I can say it as long as I'm not threatening for it to happen in a running race, in which case Scala would descend on me with uh, a pile of newspapers. Exactly. So, but yeah, no, thank you. I, I'm going to go rewatch this. Thank you both to, you know, obviously J Mac, Charlie for rolling that very disguised seed. Uh, stoppable, Mike. Uh, you're all wonderful. Everyone watching, you're all great. Thank, thank you, Zilch. I can't say enough great things about Zilch. Zilch is still a monster, but I enjoy the heck out of racing him, and I would do it anytime. Oh, thanks, Martin and GGs. Uh, yeah, we really thank enjoyed you. it. All right, and I hear another hear another noise. It sounds like we are joined by Zilch. Zilch, uh, good good run. Thank you. GGs to Martin. Congrats on knocking me out of yet another tournament. Yeah, that was a very difficult group. Um, it was quite a feat just to even get into a play-in game, regardless of how good you were. Um, you had a lot of things go right for you in the seat and some go wrong. Uh, how were you feeling about it? Um, I was pretty sure I had lost around when, I guess when I was down to Ordeals and Keyless Tower. I figured there was no way one of those two, I'm sure, Martin had done, and yeah. Um, prior to that, everything, like if the Baron key ended up leading to Darkness or something, I would have felt pretty good. But, so I had to chase that whole chain of Pan and Baron, Odin, all that, but um, but yeah, when that came up empty, I figured I was, I had lost. Um, but figure play it out, you never know. Yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the rando randoed you. Uh, it is a darkness hunt, and the first person to to find it was uh, likely going to win. You were in great position. You guys were very close, fighting Fey March bosses at the same time, and you with a crystal sword. Uh, sadly, didn't see Cecil until very late, and an adamant armor. So you were playing with, uh, with advantage, I would say, uh, until pretty late into the seed. Yeah, I mean, if a Cecil shows up, I go right to her deals and, you know, completely different race. But um, I will still say our deals was definitely the right play with the foos we had floating around to just pump up his spells because, again, we didn't get nuked till the very end. So, I mean, Marta made the correct play. Um, I was a little more gambly, I guess, in what I was trying to do. So... Yeah, I was uh, I was a little curious because I noticed that it seemed like Martin was going for raw power on those foos, whereas you definitely had the edge in terms of equipment with spiking that admin armor and getting the crystal sword. Um, was the dwarf castle check another attempt to find a Cecil? Yeah, it was two bosses for foo spells, hoping to get berserk, which sadly I didn't. Um, and it was also an attempt for the Cecil there. Um, and then when that failed. I should have gone to Ordeals just to get Berserk and or Nuke. I think I would have gotten both at that point. But I figured now let's just go uh, just do the objective Evil Wall and see if that leads to Darkness. And then it didn't. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm here. Asura's right here. I may as well do this now. Um, that ended up being a very slow fight without Berserk and without Nuke. I had to basically just... I think I should have just put the adamant armor on edge maybe and attacked with the mute knife in his other hand, but I don't know if that would have helped much because again, without berserk, it was a mess. Um, and then I also left my battle speed at three from doing the silk trap chests until very late. So a lot of little mistakes added up. Yeah, remembering to, to change that battle speed is, is definitely a major weakness of mine. It's something I see. Um, top caliber runners like yourself make often we need like a, a little a little buzzer or a, a battle speed tracker or something yeah our way to change it in fight that'd be great oh, that would be nice oh, I, can't, I can't even imagine something. what that would do to the game <laughs> oh yeah i don't know if the game could handle it but it would be nice 
But yeah, like battle speed six, you'll notice pretty quickly that, oh, I forgot to change my battle speed. Three is a little more subtle than, because I usually play on two anyway. So a little more subtle and I didn't catch it till I was trying to change it <laughs> for other reasons. So, whoops. But I don't actually know if that costs much time. Yeah, uh, battle speed three to one, at least in the Z fight, I'm told is only nine seconds. Okay, and I guess depending if you're going Berserk strats or Nuke strats, um, I feel like it's safer to go battle speed 3 anyway, if that's what you'd want to do, so. But yeah, if you're just Berserking, then you definitely want battle speed 1. All right, did you have any uh, other questions for Zilch? Stop along. Uh, nope, just want to say uh, uh, congratulations again. You did a phenomenal run to get to this point. Unfortunately, I believe this does knock you uh, out of the Anima Cup, but it has been fantastic watching out your games for this one. Thank you. It's been fun. Um, I appreciate the commentary, restreaming, and tracking. And I wish Martin all the luck. Hopefully, he goes all the way. So I can say, person that knocked me out won the whole thing, you know? Um, but we'll see. All right. Thanks again, Zilch. Uh, really good race. A really uh, a tough group. You won um, some gr good matches, close matches against great players, and uh, did everything right to win. Today, just the seed uh, had other ideas. Um, GG's again. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, so with that, that concludes our final match uh, of Tuesday. Although, uh, if you're on the East Coast, it is Wednesday now. Uh, tomorrow, we will have a uh, trio of uh, of uh, restreamed matches for you to watch uh, all in the evening. Uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern on Free Enterprise. Here we have Simbu versus Lady Id for the Heroin Robe play-in at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, on RPG Limit Break, we have Microcorgs versus Dusty Griff for the Dragoon Helm Winner Tiebreaker. That should be interesting. And at 9 p.m. Uh, on Free Enterprise 2, we have Elven Sorrow versus Zyrak for the Aegis Shield play. Uh, a trio of fantastic matches. And once again, we've nicely spaced them out so you can just go from one to another and have a nice evening full of Free Enterprise action. Okay, uh, where are we heading uh, to now, Stoppable? All right, uh, it looks like we are going to head over to Zyrak, who is doing some practice for that match tomorrow, most likely. Uh, and so remember, do not spoil the outcome of this match or any other match you may have come from tonight, as we, I believe, have three channels worth of people in here now. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thanks again to Charlie for the restream and for this uh, fantastic jet seed. And whether you did it on purpose or not, uh, bringing Puffmas out for the all pink puff uh, broadcast booth. And uh, Jay Mac the Librarian for uh, the tracking and uh, keeping the chat entertained too, answering all our questions. We appreciate that. And uh, mm -hmm. shout out to uh, Mike Mike as well. It's been fantastic doing commentary with you this evening. Likewise, Stoppable, you did a great job. Um, um, yep, thanks to our our restreamer and tracker Charlie and J Mac. Uh, I think we did a pretty good job for some puffs, and thank you viewers for uh, watching a really good race tonight. Yep. So go give those runners a follow. Go give anyone. Go give the broadcast team a follow, and don't forget to check back tomorrow on Free Enterprise, Free Enterprise Two, and RPG Limit Break for more action. But with that, uh, we're gonna kick it over to Zyrak and uh, see some practice. Everyone have a great evening. Good night.